African identity is many things, but I think the reason why we keep talking so much about it and searching so much for it is that the African self in many ways has been broken through our experience of colonialism, through our experience for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years to be only identified as potential slaves, potential work, labor, potential non-humans in the production that should enrich other people. That has been something we have gone through for the last 500 to 1,000 years. And it has marked us, it has meant that identity has become something that is very challenging to form as an African person, almost anywhere where you live in the, in the world. And of course, even more challenging when you live in the diaspora, away from the roots that you originally came from. But even on the continent, people struggle with identity, struggle with self, struggle with understanding who they are and what they should do to kind of create or develop a strong self. So I've done a lot of work in my own reflections and also the basis of my work with young people and with communities really centers around finding a strong African self. In the African, in African culture, the highest sense of knowledge is knowledge of self. Mm -hmm. So when we lack knowledge of self, it is almost impossible to mount any amount of strength, confidence and meaningfulness. And I think a lot of young people today, they look for meaningfulness, they wonder if what is the space in life for me? Why am I going through all these things that I am? Um, is there anything that I can use to find meaning and to also understand myself and the community around me better? I think because our existence, our history, our different and multiple experiences of struggle, is so under-communicated and very often marginalized and never really discussed in places of power. It means that many of the problems we go through are also not seen as significant. And very often when we as Africans open our mouth to talk about some of the issues we go through, to other ears it sounds like complaining. It sounds like we are just repeating a pattern of self-pity and victimization. And it's not that. It is not that. It is us giving voice to a very real experience that we face on a daily basis, but that many other races and people can choose to ignore and do not necessarily have to understand. It doesn't really affect their daily lives. It does affect us. So we are not exaggerating. We are not making it a, 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 a more than what it is. We are just giving voice to something that is extremely important to talk about. Now, I want to say this. We must talk and give a voice to our oppression and our experience of being marginalized and disempowered. But as we do that, we must not sink into the trap of just getting stuck in it. And I think sometimes we do that. We get stuck in this because it's very difficult to know how do we find a way out of this misery that we find ourselves in. And my advice would be that when we have these discussions, we should talk about our misery and our difficult experiences, but with the aim of getting out of them. So there must always be a purpose for what we talk about. Just sharing stories of the different types of racism we face, the different types of marginalization and exclusion that we face is important. I mean, just to let off steam, just to kind of let it go, just to process. But at the same time, that must be part of the commitment to stand up to it, to resolve it, and to really engage in a collective struggle as African people where we can stand shoulder to shoulder to reclaim what rightfully is ours. And on top of that, I think, is our dignity, our understanding of self, and our ability to do something with the problems that we face. Because our experience has been that we are oppressed, that we are marginalized and sidelined, part of having experienced that for such a long time over many generations also means that it's difficult to trust each other because we become a people that is squeezed into so many corners and we have many times experienced that one of us sides with the enemy, does something to trick us, sells us out, does something that disempowers the little amount of power we were able to build. So 
I'm not calling it paranoia, but I'm calling it a there's, 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 there's a layer in our psyche where we become suspicious, where we become distrusting, where we become um, almost vicious and, 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 and where we become almost vicious and want to do something to each other, where we want to remove ourselves from, co from ways of collaborating, where we want to gossip, where we want to talk bad about each other. And when I say that this is a result of the marginalization that we experience, I'm not trying to excuse it because I think at the same time we need to take responsibility for what we are doing to ourselves and each other, but I'm just saying it comes from somewhere. It's part of that design, of that colonial design where we are squeezed into a corner and we don't know who to trust, we don't know where is the road towards solutions. So. When you don't have a strong sense of self and you don't really know and understand what your identity is, it impacts on your behavior, your thought patterns and the way, the kind of person you become. So a lot of African young people, for instance, spend time in self-doubt, spend time wondering what is life really about? Do I want to live? Is it worth living? Do, do my, does my life really matter? It creates anger and frustration, you will be short-tempered, you will be, you will be act to other people in a way that maybe later you think, oh, I took it a little bit too far, I shouldn't have said that, I didn't really mean to say that. Because there's a frustration inside, it's, it, it becomes a reflection of the colonial wound that we have experienced as African people. Now that wound is within your soul, within your being, within your sense of self, your broken sense of self. So when you speak, when you think, when you act, you speak with that pain, you speak from that pain. You, if your voice comes through an experience of pain. So you might say and do things that you don't mean, you might hurt other people, you might put other people down. And chances are, if you don't hurt others, you are hurting yourself. There's a lot of self-inflicted pain that young Africans do to themselves by doubting themselves, by shortchanging themselves, by thinking they're not worthy, by worrying about their looks, their complexions, their lips, their noses. A lot of thoughts go into that by young African people feeling that they are representation of ugly, of irrelevant, of unwanted. And when that thought of unwantedness becomes the root of your own identity and feeling of self, Obviously, you're not going to enjoy life. Obviously, you're not going to take pride in being who you are. Obviously, you're not going to be appreciative of other young black people because you feel they are the representation of what is not wanted. And you have now, you have now made that the foundation of your own broken self. So to get out of that cycle, you need to do a couple of things. One is, and this is where I know a lot of young people struggle, you need to read. There is no way that you can just get this knowledge from out of space. You need to sit down and read. I know there's YouTube films. I know there's ways of getting shortcuts to this. But by and large, you also need to read. You also need to have a book in your hand to understand the history that you come from. To understand that you once were part of a very royal, very industrious, very innovative people. And you have been made into something far less and that is not your original self. So if you locate yourself in that, you need to understand that there's a different template to draw from. And for you to understand that, you need to immerse yourself into it. So you need to read, you need to sit with elders to understand how things were in the past. I know many young people feel that, but I don't want to go back. I don't want to continue to look back to a point. I want to go forward. What I'm saying is that you cannot go forward if you don't know where you come from. You cannot create the future if you don't know what your past was built on and i'm saying to you african young men african young women you come from incredible greatness and we need you to position that again we need you to emulate that we need you to identify with that so that you can become a strong warrior to change the world we live in right now and i believe that that's possible if we make that choice and you can only make that choice if you know better because if you know better you do better so I would just encourage young people to read, to understand more about the history, to understand more about what kind of people we were, so that we can make a plan for what kind of people we want to become.